Howdy guys, I'm Auto Edits Jason, and back front and center in the garage is Large Marge, the 73 Mustang. And we have a couple of really exciting tweaks to do in today's video before we stuff these sticky NT05 Nitto tires underneath this thing and take it to the track and actually see what this thing's capable of. It's blown me away step after step on performance, comfort, all of the things. So we're gonna now add a little bit of safety before we stuff some sticky. All right, so before we jump inside the Mustang and I show you the cool install of the status racing harnesses and that little four point roll cage and the Chris Olsen harness bar. Let me show you the nittos that are going on this thing. Now this is something that I've been kind of dying to uh, finally get here. As you guys know, if you saw the test and tune video or the very first road test video where we take these out, these are the BFG Comp 2s and this is a, just a really nice all season tire. I, do, I go into a lot explaining of why I got these things. And one of the things that I didn't, I wasn't able to get was these only, the largest size was a 275 in this tire my vision for this car was always for a 295 and nitto makes that in this one so i'm really thrilled to finally fully flush out my vision of what the stance of this car will be so if you can see we're going to be and now i went with a 295 45 sidewall so it's going to be a tiny bit taller a, at least an inch wider than these so as you can see it, how that kind of sits in the wheel well like this these are going to be much beefier and it's gonna give the car a much more forward uh, muscular rake to it. So that was the thought in my head, but I've always been pleased with, you can kind of see, check out the stance of this car the way it sits right now. It's really good. So you just do this, you can kind of see where I'm going. But that's for the next video. So let's jump inside. Let me show you the safety stuff. So to start things off, I'll explain what we have going on here. There's a combination of parts. This roll hoop, you guys may or may not remember if you've been around the Large Marge project for a long time, seven or so years ago at one of my old jobs, my boss was cool enough to actually let my buddy DJ bend me up this rad hoop that fits absolutely perfect in here. I just never had the time, uh, courage to go ahead and finalize it and install it. So I just finally did. <laughs> seven years later, I've been dragging this hoop around. This is a very good lesson on just owning it and moving forward. Like, I, I don't know about you guys, but I see all my, in my Instagram feed, all my friends are like amazing welders and they do, like they post all those. I'm not that guy and I don't do it enough. And that, that was one of the things that was crippling me to do this. It's like, oh, I'm gonna make ugly welds and it's, I'm gonna be embarrassing. You know what, I decided to own it and just commit and get this thing in here. And I'm really thrilled with it so far. So yeah, the welds are ugly, but you know what? It's in and I'm gonna get to go to the track. So I'm, I'm just happy to have found that spot. This is a good place to be right now. Now, uh, what we have here is the hoop that DJ bent up for me years ago. I went ahead and when you do a roll cage into a unibody car like this, where you have sheet metal as kind of a, a structural piece here, you don't have frame rail right here. You have to plate underneath where the bar goes. So I went ahead and did that. Now there's something, another little thing that happened years ago when I did this, I intended to mount the bar here onto the, the front of the torque box. And that I didn't think of would get in the way of rolling up and down the window. I need to keep that. So I definitely want to be able to roll my windows up and down and back here. And I think at the time I was saying, thinking I was going to have power windows, but guess what? I don't. Yeah, so we need to keep it practical. So I went ahead and moved the roll bar back to this mount here, went ahead and plated that, welded the perimeter of the plate, and then you could weld your bar to that. I like where I ended up moving it back a little bit because I love having the B pillar. This is what they call a no post car, where when the window is down, see the post is right here. And when the window is down, you have this beautiful open space here. I didn't want to ruin that. And this is nice to have this tucked back here. You can hardly notice it. It still goes way up above the driver and passenger. Um, and then I went ahead and just bought some inch and three quarter DOM tubing. 
and ran that down to the two, ran two stringers to the back where I also plated the two areas in the trunk. Where those things land is right where the cradle for the coilover shock suspension, uh, it supports that. So that's kind of one of the things that adding something like this in your vehicle will help. So protection isn't just the only benefit that getting a roll cage and some more stability up here, it adds rigidity to the chassis by adding triangulation to suspension points back there. So I don't have a back seat in this car, I have no plans for a back seat, so that's not a big factor. I did notice that on the Chris Olsen Chassis Works website, they sell bars like this, cages that you could buy tailored to your car, and they even make one with a bend, a bar that'll go through the speaker holes in the rear package tray, so you could keep your back seat. So there's some really cool options, and that leads me into the removable harness bar. What I, what I ordered, I thought would be the fastest way, because I was still in the mindset of not being able to install all this bar was to buy their removable harness and this I want to share with you guys because I think this is a really cool feature for people who don't necessarily want to cage their car or put a roll bar in their car to go hit the autocross or go hit a track day with a four point or five point harness but you need a place to mount your uh, your harness straps to so that's where this comes in handy I've seen kits that mount them all the way back on your package tray and do all that I don't want any of that I wanted something cool so here's how this thing works. So say you just have a regular muscle car or even a modern, more modern passenger car, you would just find a place on the B pillar here to mount this mounting plate. You can bolt that into place and then with a little bit of welding, you would weld these tabs to that plate and then you have another bar here with these bungs on the end that make this removable. So I just would have to remove these two bolts and this whole bar would come out. And then if you wanted to keep your inner panels here, you could actually just trim little holes, little slots for them for this panel to fit right into there. And so you would have only these sticking out if you wanted to day to day your car, have passengers back here. So it's a really cool system. Plus it even has these cool little tabs you can weld on to hold your harness into place like this, which I find pretty fascinating. I'm gonna wait till I get my final seats. I'm still rocking these Jegs $99 seats. So I'm not gonna commit to that yet. If you were gonna be taking this bar in and out, that would be super handy to just keep everything in place. You would just unbolt these two bolts, this bar comes out, goes into the garage until your next track day, and then boom, goes right back in, everything's in place. So the problem that I ran into was, because 73 Mustang, there is absolutely no good place to mount this in this entire B-pillar area that would get me in the actual safe ballpark for height of the roll the harness bar mount uh, to me or the occupants of the vehicle. So everything was gonna be a little bit too low or I was gonna have to build too much and I still wanted to access the, the, arm the armature for the window and just nothing was working out. I just was getting frustrated and that's what was the inspiration to go ahead and get this bar off the side yard, get it in this car and just incorporate the removable harness bar in my design to get this done. All right, so let's do a little unboxing of our status stuff for the passenger side. Now, I stumbled across this brand when I was doing the PRP seat covers for the Jeep. This is in the same uh, umbrella of coolness. And so I was like, oh, this is cool. And they make rad seats too. So I got my eye trained to that. Now, these are the three inch harnesses. And kind of one of the things I liked about this brand is that they kind of have this cool feel and look to them. So they offer all the SFI specification, but they actually have some cool features that make me happy, especially if you're going to go on a dri daily dri driven car with this stuff. Now, and on, on that note, let me just give you one tip from having a few little hot rods back in the day. If you're going to daily drive a car with harnesses like this, get the cam lock this type of release this will just it just is so much nicer than that latch look if you're making a track day car only that's fine but when you start going and running errands and shopping and doing whatever this just makes your life so much easier so i recommend that so that's the lap belt there let's see there's our other lap belt there um pretty cool instructions i'm gonna go over some of these things with you right here there's a, a few things to pay attention to like that's one of the things i did when i put the bar in was i just made sure that it was at the right height to pass tech and to be safe the height of your harness is very important because the mounting point too high and then the straps become too stretchy and they don't keep you in the seat and don't keep you captured too low and they actually can compress your spine and cause other damage so 
it's kind of cool to follow the instructions and that's why I set the, the height on that to what I did. Uh, these come with, these are five point harnesses and I'm not going to do the fifth point today, but they have an anti-submarine or a uh, crotch strap gill uh, that will go to the floor. And one of the things I like about these things is that they have really a, a, a ton of flexibility in mounting. So for the floor, I just go in ahead and bolted these eyelets that they come with right into the stock seatbelt holes. And then for the upper, since we're mounting to that bar and I didn't, don't wanna to have to weld anything to it, I literally, I'm gonna show you guys in a second how to just weave that through and just use the buckle here to keep it on the, the bar behind the seat and just put these in the box and save these for now. So, you know, that's pretty cool. All right, so the easy way to remember how to do this is kind of like tying your shoes. Uh, the trickiest part is getting the length. I'm not gonna tell you, the way it's just trial and error. You just do some guess measurements, sit in the seat, get, get it right. Um, there, there's no tip to that, it's just, do it a few times, measure, and that's why I put this buckle right here because I sat in the seat, put the, the harnesses on, and then measured to the bar. You're gonna end up wanting this thing, just like on the passenger side here, uh, where the, the buckle is right near the bar. You don't want it drifting too far away, but you don't want it right up against it and rattling. So just about, just about like that will do. And then let's keep going. So we got one tuck there. We'll go another tuck there. And then you just double back. Let's just double back. And so you just tuck a little bit through there, grab it. And that is it. That is a harness worthy of a race car. Boom, done. And then we'll trim that in a second. We'll do the second one. So that's our first arm there. Next one up, breeze through that. Again, loop, swoop, and pull, just like shoelaces. Now, for the part that I always hate, I don't know about you guys, but I hate cutting stuff because it's like this weird level of commitment. And what if you want it longer or a bigger person or you want your seats farther away? Just cut them. You don't want all of this stuff flapping around. That's just kind of dorky. We'll cut these about there. And these are just regular old scissors. This, this will give me enough room to add a little bit. Now what you want to do, the trick here, is just to burn the end so that way it doesn't fray on you. And you just do that. Boom. Ow, that was my knuckle hair. <laughs> Hopefully one of these cameras got that. Ow. I guess that's what you get for being a big gorilla when you're doing this. Oh, that's funny. And voila! Let's go ahead and plumb them through the back of the seat. All right, there you go. Now, these are sitting just about level with my shoulders for now, which is completely within range. Um, I'm planning on going with a higher end, nicer seat, probably from status. I'm, I'm just digging their stuff. They care about not just the race quality and the safety, but they have this cool vibe, a good look to them. So, and I, I dig that. So, and those seats, all the stuff I, re I researched, they're up another maybe inch or two. So that's why I gave myself a little bit of room. So they're level now. When I get my final seats, it'll go up. I'll be right in that 10 degree down from here. It'll be perfect. So there you have it. Boom, harnesses. All right, so here's the basic reason why I really like this setup as a daily driver type situation. So you get your lap belt on, and then this is as safe as I was before. And then it's just a matter of, and you're out with the lap belt. So if you're just running down the street, that's fine. Then you bring in the big guns here. Let's see if we can get you to see this. Easy peasy, easy peasy, boom. Now the other thing, <laughs> was worried about when I was doing this is that in my old 82 Camaro, I just didn't think far enough ahead to on the cockpit for when I was belted in, how to reach the controls. On this one, belted in, I could just barely reach all my controls so I can actually start the car, run the AC, windshield wiper, headlights, all of that stuff. So, so yeah, 
There you go. And then to get out, boom, out you go. Pretty cool, right? I have one more surprise for you guys that I uh, spent a little time on this morning. Now, a couple of you guys are probably wondering, A, why are we laying on the ground behind the Mustang? And B, how did I get that ding in my cheek? Well, they're related. Uh, I spent a few hours changing the exhaust on this thing. Now, I know it sounded amazing. It was so loud and rowdy. It's because it had race car exhaust on it. I had the Flowmaster Outlaw two and a half inch exhaust on this thing, and it's basically just it's a fake muffler. There's no muffling to it. So I got the long tube headers and that. So it just punished you. Like after a few minutes in this thing, it just was so remarkably loud. My tinnitus would act up. It was, it was just a little abusive. So what I ended up doing was I had ordered years ago these Flowmaster Hush Power long tube three inch diameter. So I changed it right after the X pipe back up to three inch and through the Hush Powers and it sounds freaking awesome. It's still loud. It's still rowdy. It just doesn't abuse me at the driver while I'm driving it. You want to hear it? I know you do. All right. So listen to this thing. Right? Still plenty loud. But for some reason, it's a more refined loud. I love the idle on this thing. You hear that? It's super tight, like it's just, it's a little raspier, but a little bit quieter. It's perfect. It's literally the perfect, I couldn't have imagined it sounding better. Right? Yeah. So the thing just keeps getting better and better. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned until next time we put sticky tires and see what this, this thing has. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and enjoy your drive.